All right, Lisa, so are you born here or did you come here? Well, technically, I'm a come here, but after about 22 years, three kids born here, I think I can enter the files and ranks of those born here, don't you think? I think so. Well, why I'm asking is it's important to know if you were born here or if you come here and for how long to know the effects of the weather. If you're from the South, and many people consider Maryland the South, then you can technically define extreme cold as anything near freezing or 32 degrees. Now, if you're from the North, you can't consider it extremely cold un unless it reaches zero or, you know, well below. I'm just cold whenever it freezes. That, yeah. that's, a, that's my barometer. <laughs> it's right cold there. out right now, I'll say that. <laughs> but for all of you who don't let geography decide how you feel and if you're cold, you know you'll do anything to get warm. So, how can you make that happen quickly? Here now is a reporter who gets you that answer with the help of a thermal imaging camera. This is a thermal imaging camera. Firefighters use them to detect body heat when trying to find someone trapped in a burning building. But what can the camera do when it comes to detecting people in ice? To figure that out, this reporter put the camera to the test to determine body heat loss. For reference, the brightest spots on the image reflect the warmest parts. So your body wants to keep itself warm and it's going to push the blood to the more essential organs. So you often lose it from the extremities, fingers, toes, exposed places like ears and nose. Just as predicted, her face starts off really hot, but within 60 seconds, you can see the heat start to rush to her core. Seven minutes later, the dark spots show where her face is starting to feel the freeze. You know, that nose is very easily exposed to the cold weather. Another minute later, look at the change in her cheeks. Should I take off this glove? The one on the right just had a glove on it. Within 20 seconds, you see its heat start to disappear. Proof that proper winter gear is critical. It starts to almost become a survival situation. Firefighter Matthew Dawson knows how bitter the cold can be. He recently suffered hypothermia while out on an ice rescue. My thoughts weren't clear. There was a bunch, it was basically just a jumble. Just a bunch of words coming out at the same time. He reiterates, if you don't have to be out on the cold and extreme temperatures, don't. And that goes for your four-legged friends, too. Little Lillian's whole body looks nice and toasty until she walks out the front door. In just a couple of minutes, you can see her face and front legs start to go cold. Whatever's white is where she's so warm as. Right. As for the reporter testing the camera, she came back out dressed in the appropriate layers, and through the lens, she looks much more insulated and says she feels more functional, too. Again, the reporter who did the test says these tests were done to illustrate how quickly both people and pets lose body heat when it's bitterly cold outside. Now, when temperatures hit sub-zero, they can be very dangerous and leaving your skin exposed can quickly lead to frostbite. Dr. Polinski recommends dressing in layers and staying as dry as possible to avoid frostbite and hypothermia. Even here on Delmarva. Mm -hmm. Now, when it does come to dressing for the cold, I tell you, we've come a long way since the long johns and turtleneck. New technology makes it easier than ever to stay warm, and it's all about that base. Want to stay warm? It's all about that base layer. A good base layer, what it's going to do is it's going to um, work to manage the moisture on your body. It's going to keep you warm by keeping you dry. Activewear expert John Malosnik says, think synthetics or merino wool. It's all in the stitching. Against the skin, it's actually very porous so that it's going to draw the, the moisture away from you. And you can see the channels that it has. For a mid-layer, something soft inside. So it's a synthetic outer material and they brush fleece the interior. He says the top layer is about element resistance. So it's a shield and that shield becomes a barrier for you and it protects you from the elements. Throw in a scarf, headband and mittens, not gloves. When you get to keep your hand together, that's how you stay the warmest. Staying warm is as easy as one, two, three, four. And remember, John says there is no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes. Some other options to keep in mind when layering dress and waterproof pants and jackets as the top layer. Cotton holds moisture in, so like you just heard, wool works better. As you probably already know, spending too much time in the cold can increase your chance for frostbite. Your ears, nose, hands and feet are most vulnerable, so keep them covered. The first warning signs of cold danger you want to look for are a pins and needles sensation and numbness. Now, when it comes to cold, not all of us are created equal. It's the same for livestock. Yeah, how many times have you driven past a farm saying, oh, those poor cows must be so cold, or what is that farmer thinking? Well, it turns out our sympathy may be misplaced. Jimmy gives us the lowdown on farm animals. We might not like the cold conditions, 
but it turns out cattle don't seem to mind. Uh, the animals get along way better than we do. Any animal that's got hair on it, they're going to stay warm out in this area. As long as they can get out of the wind, they'll be fine. Bobby King has raised animals for decades. He says as long as cows have feed and water, they can handle the cold. Pigs need a warm shelter. Chickens need a place to block the wind. Listen to the girls in this coop. They aren't bothering to come out, refusing to leave their cozy environment. Farmers need to keep warm too so they can take care of their animals and cold temperatures can make an already tough job tougher. When it gets down below zero, it's going to freeze. You just go down there, take about a half a gallon of hot water, put on the valve, unthaw it, and they're fine. So the next time you see a cow out in the cold, remember, they're built for this weather better than we are. Another strategy farmers use for dealing with the cold weather is to feed their cattle at night. Farmandranch.com says the heat from the digestion peaks a few hours after a meal, so offering meals in the evening can help cattle cope 